Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Dr. Stacey and C. Grant, and I'm here to welcome you to Les Brown's Motivational Monday Night Call, your place for motivation and inspiration by world-renowned speaker, author, coach, Mr. Les Brown, featuring Mr. Brown and his platinum speakers. We're so excited that you've taken time out of your Monday evening to join us. For all of our new listeners, welcome to the family. And to all of our faithful members, we thank you for being here every single week to show your support, to share your brilliance, and be a part of a movement of hope across this globe. So I am very grateful to know that each of you are not only listening, but you're taking action. And shout out to Sharia from San Diego, who joined the Les Brown Certification Program. We are so excited to welcome you to the family, and thank you for investing in yourself and in making this your best life yet. So remember, you can connect with Mr. Brown on social media, on Facebook, and that's brown.less, brown.less on Facebook. And if you, too, want to join the Les Brown Certification Program, you can visit the Les Brown Institute. Dot com. That's the Les Brown Institute.com. And I'll make that announcement again at the end of the call. But tonight, ladies and gentlemen, I'm excited because Mr. Brown himself is able to steal away from a series of meetings to spend a little time with you and have a conversation around this first day of spring, the new and wonderful things that are happening, and just for him to touch base with his faithful audience here on a motivational Monday night call. So without further ado, let me just check the microphones. Mr. Brown, are you live? Yes, I am. And guess what else I'm doing? I what are you am, doing, Les? I just, I think I went live on Facebook. I don't know. Let me see. I pushed go live, but I didn't see anything yet. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. Can you, see, can you check the scene? Can I be seen? Let me see. Let me see how to do it. I will check for you, ladies and gentlemen. This is live. I'll try to do calling. Some- yeah, I'm trying, I'm trying to do something up here, you know? <laughs> I love it. Well, I'm checking right now. All right. Stand by to see if we can see you live. So, ladies and gentlemen, you can follow and listen to Mr. Brown as he is doing this call. So, I am rebooting right now myself. I'm just touching to everything. Sure. I- You're touching everything? <laughs> <laughs> Do I need to do something? Let me see. No, once I'm, it says live, you don't need to do anything else. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Switch left. Let me see. Oh, video only mode. Swipe left to reveal. Hold a minute. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm here by well, myself, you, but I decided to be adventurous. Let me see this. Let me see. You're trying to be adventurous. <laughs> okay. uh, Tell me what to do. I push. Okay, live. so here's here's what you do because it's not showing up live on the page yet. Go to like you're gonna write a post, and once you click on that, you'll see go live and just put in motivational Monday night call, and we'll all be able to see you, those of you who are listening and able to access your computer. So okay, just go like I, you're writing something. Mm-hmm. No, I did that. It still didn't come on. But you know something? And did see. you do it on your computer or your phone? Live video must be four seconds long. So what are they telling me here? So I'm on my phone. Oh, see, if you're doing the call from the phone and clicking it, it might not allow you to do both. It might, oh, it won't, oh you say it might not allow me to do both? To do both, correct. Okay. All right. Yeah, you'd have to use another line and then put the the live on on your phone. Oh. So here, yeah, that's how you have to do it. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's your first oh, piece you for hear, the night. Yeah, can you hear me well? We can hear you well. So this is you okay, being so, adventurous. Yes. Well, it didn't work out tonight, but it will work out next week. Okay. Listen, I, thank you so much. I, here's what I'm grateful for. I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful oh, for your you. for your friendship and for your willingness to do this with no pay other than people calling in and sharing their stories and me calling in. And I just thank you and I appreciate you and I value you 
and, and your friendship so much. I, I want to speak tonight seriously, and I encourage all of you, before I get into my message, I want you to email as many people as you can and have them listen to me tonight. I have a message tonight, and, and I'm really serious about this. I, I spoke for Grant Cardone organization this past weekend. It was just a great experience. And, and Gloria Mayfield Banks spoke, and she was powerful. I mean, just breathtaking. I was so proud of her. Very good friend. But they had a program on 60 Minutes yesterday. On 60 Minutes, it showed something that's going on all over this country. Over 20,000 people are losing their jobs every day. Kevin Bracey, one of my most talented speakers, is speaking at a school district in San Diego tomorrow. 1,400 people have received pink slips. And on 60 Minutes, they showed where a company had told people their job was going to be sent to India. And in order for them to get their retirement, they would have to train their replacement. Just think about that. That's happening all over the country. My daughter, my, my sister Sharon, who's been working in the baking industry for 22 years, they sent her job to Mexico and they brought people over from Mexico for Sharon to train them for her job. Sharon was earning around $63,000 a year, been there for 22 years, and the people who will take over her job will probably earn around $1,500 a year. It might be very good for business, there's no question about that, but it's devastating for a lot of people. A lot of people. A lot of people. I, my sister was, she was very, very distraught about it. But we're living in a time that this was projected by Peter Drucker and Alvin Toffler, and he wrote a book years ago called Future Shock. This is something I've been talking about, that jobs will be sent abroad because it will be cheaper, and technology would make that possible. And today, studies were revealed last week that 50% of the jobs that are being held right now can be done by robots. The people who were campaigning for increase in minimum wage at McDonald's, they've been fired, and they're replacing them with kiosks. Many fast food places are moving in that direction. So I want to talk to you about what I talked to Kevin about, what I talked to my sister about. I want to talk to you about that. You know, my favorite book says, Think It Not Strange That You Face the Fiery Furnaces of This World. You will, not you might. You will have tribulations. Things are going to happen. I was in bed before this call, and I decided to get up. I was hurting from the pain in my back, from the cancer, and the lower part of my back from the protruding disc, the sciatic nerve, the sciatic pain between my knee and my ankle. And I said, i got to get up. I told Cat Patrick, my son, I said, anytime you see me in bed and you see me looking as bad as I was looking when you came in the room and said, Dad, what's wrong? I want you to extend your hand to me and say, Dad, get up so I can start moving. Because just movement alone, just going for a walk, it, en it, en it enhances you. Just the exercise of doing something, just going for a walk, not even thinking about what's going on right now. And, and I can say to you from this place that you have the power to go through this and even more. I say to you, don't focus on what's going on in the White House. Focus on what's going on in your house. I want you to think about 
the direction that you're going to take your life in. Things are going to happen. They're going to happen. We lose people. We love. We get injuries. We have accidents. We lose jobs that you thought you would be able to retire from. Life catch you on the blind side. I spoke this weekend to the new millenniums, Brad Cardone's audience, very young people in their 20s. And I said to them as I looked out on this audience, I said, time is working against me. I have more yesterdays than I do tomorrows. And my message to you is develop a program for your mind. My message to you, go on YouTube, find Les Brown speaking in the Georgia Dome and watch that on a regular basis because your mind will be in a different place each time you watch it but it's going to strengthen you to live your life from the inside out. Things are going to happen that you just can't anticipate. I want you to go on YouTube and find everything I've done. I have one called Mindset. I want you to watch it and listen. As you listen to my voice, I'm telling you, because of what I've gone through, when I did those sleeping on the floor of the Penobscot building in Detroit, Michigan, as I did those when I was struggling to build the business and build a global voice, that I can hear something in my voice that God has gifted me with to bring people from a dark place. I, I talked to a guy. He said, I flew here to hear you. I love Grant Cardone. But I was in a dark space, and I had no reason to want to live, and someone introduce me to your voice, and you brought me to the light. I can't tell you how many times I heard that. I can't tell you the number of men and women who embraced me and hugged me and say, you saved my life. And that's why I'm training speakers, because we have to multiply our voices. That's why today we need messengers of hope, greater than ever before. Evil prevails when good men and women do nothing. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. Words are powerful. We need words of hope. Suicide rate among young children has increased 300%, particularly among African-American males. Something wrong with that. They're listening to us. They're listening to our conversations. Our children are watching us. This is the time, number one, that we have to focus on what it is we want. What is it you want? Don't focus on what has happened. Don't talk about that. Don't give that any energy. Don't feed that. Think about what do you want to do now with your life? Because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. You're more than a conqueror. You've got to argue and fight with yourself sometimes. I, I, I told myself. I'm, I'm not going to surrender to this pain. I'm not going to stay in bed and feel sorry for myself. But earlier, I said to my oldest son, who had a stroke, and and Calvin is, is being fed through a tube in his stomach. And I said, Calvin, I said, man, you know, I would love just to feel normal sometimes. I, I'm tired of hurting tired of being in pain. I'm tired of feeling weary. I just want to feel good for a period of time. And then I had to stop myself. Because he's got his own stuff that he's dealing with. He can't even swallow his own saliva. He's got a tube in his stomach. That's how he receives his food. He's lost over 60 pounds. And I came in the room and I had to say to myself, I'm stronger than this. Cancer, sciatic pain, another of the disappointments that I've been dealing with, none of this will get the best of me. I'm, I'm reminded of the words of Howard Thurman. I love these words. There's something in each and every one of us that waits and listens to the voice 
of the genuine in yourself. It will be perhaps the only voice you will ever hear. And if you cannot hear it, all of your life will be spent on the ends of strings that somebody else pulls. And I say to you that you listen to this voice that you're now listening to, because what I say is already in you. And you've decided that you don't want your mindset to be manipulated by the strings of the economy, to be manipulated by the negative conversations that are out there, to be manipulated by, by people around you who don't have goals and dreams of who surrender to what's going on. There's something in you that caused you to gravitate to me, to find me, because that which is in me is in you. And all I'm doing is reminding you of that. I tell you, I said it once and I said it again, life is a fight for territory. And once you stop fighting for what you want, what you don't want will automatically take over. And we have to fight to feel good. We have to fight to rise above the pain. We have to fight to start all over again. We have to fight to build a new life, to create a new chapter. And we can. We were born for such a time as this. You think about the words, stony the road we trod, bitter the chesting rod, felt in the days when hope unborn had died, yet with a steady beat have not our weary feet come to a place for which our fathers sighed. We've come over a way that with tears has been watered. We've come treading a path through the blood of the slaughtered. You think about it. It's powerful. You've gone through a lot already. And you're still standing. The lady said, that's brown, boy, he's gone through a lot. He's strong. You, you're right. You got that right. I am. I'm Mamie Brown's boy. I remember my, my mother get up in the morning. Well, Arthur's bothering me. What do you mean, mama? Don't worry, boy. You, you live long enough, you'll find out. She's talking about arthritis. And those swollen ankles and those swollen knees did not stop her from leaving the house many times walking in the rain to go to a bus station to catch a bus downtown in my the m m cafeteria. She didn't let anything stop her. She, she was determined. The seven children that she adopted, they will never go to bed hungry. And when she could no longer work, when no one would hire her because she was too old and had arthritis in her shoulders and in her knees and ankles, she wrote numbers. She didn't have multi-level marketing then. She sold homebrew. She sold moonshine. Uh, I haven't even been able to go see that movie that was shot in Overtown where I was raised in Miami. I fear that I might see something that will bring back the memory. When my mother went to jail, <laughs> she went to jail for us. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> she went to jail for us. She worked hard. She's a good person. She didn't deserve that. And, you know, when I look at all the things that's going on right now, what's most important is ask for help, not because you're weak, but because you want to remain strong. I can't tell you the number of times that I've called Dwight Pleasure. A spiritual brother had said, Dwight, would you pray for me? Or Valerie Parker. You pray for me, for Stacy, because all of us have our moments in the garden of Gethsemane. All of us. Jesus even said, "Will you pray with me?" No. And you have to focus on and hold your mind there 
on what you want. Your, your thoughts have magnetic power. Don't cloud your mind with how will I do it. Lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct that path. You will be led. Focus on what it is you want. Imagine things being better for you. Live out of your imagination, not out of your history. That's step one. That's step two. Step one, ask for help. Surround yourself with collaborative, achievement-driven, supportive relationships. People that will stand with you, people that will pray with you, people that can give you some advice until your head gets clear and you can give them some advice, that you can be there for each other. I'm so very blessed to have people like that in my life. I'm so blessed. And the other thing is that keep moving. Don't stop. You, you, you're not given the luxury to feel sorry for yourself. I got in bed because I was hurting. My leg, my back, the sciatic pain on my right side, the cancer on the left, the swelling on my neck, feeling weary in my head. And I crawl into bed, and then something said, get up. Get up, therefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day that having done all to stand. Get up, Les. I got to stand. I got to stand. Not crawl, stand. Not huddle in a corner feeling sorry for myself, but stand. Not complain that I'm tired of, of being sick and hurting every day and want some relief and can't get a full night's sleep, but stand in spite of. Everything we have, we've got it in spite of. In spite of the odds, in spite of the circumstances, in spite of the things that were working against us. We did it in spite of. And we can do it again and again and again. I tell you, when you are going through this valley experience, know that this too shall pass. It will pass. It seems like forever when you're going through it, but it will pass. I know that. I've had some valley experiences, and I was stronger on the other side of it. In all things, give thanks. I used to have a problem with that. But I, I understand, because there's something on the surface you don't understand. And, and we have to judge righteous judgment, to look beyond the surface and trust. And that's the final point. I want to make trust. We don't hear much about that. Trust. Trust in the Lord. Trust. Even if you have no evidence or anything to point to that will justify trusting. Listen to me. Listen to me. Trust. Believe and know he will bring you through. One of my songs that I love is James Cleveland. Lord, help me to hold out. Help me, please, for Jesus. Help me to hold out until my change comes. 
until my change comes. I don't know who I'm talking to. But I feel in my spirit that this message is landing in some heart, some place, somewhere that needs to hear this. I'm saying if you're at the end of your rope, tie a knot and hold on. You have something special. You have greatness in you. And your greatness comes out during adversity. When you are living from your greatness, you affect people. And when you're living from mediocrity, you infect people. That's not an option for you. You have something special. You have greatness in you. That's my story. And I'm sticking to it. Stacy? I am here, Les. What a message. I tell you, your greatness comes out of your adversity. That was a drop the mic. Back up off the stage. You have set it on fire, Mr. Brown. What a message. This truly will resonate with each and every one that was listening in their hearts. Because as you said, there's so much more. We don't know what's ahead. But if we keep moving, if we ask for help, if we trust that oh, things will get better, because this too shall pass. So much you packed in tonight's message. And I thank you for pushing forward to do the call. Uh, you were getting a little rest in between a very busy schedule, but you still came on tonight to share this message of hope. And I want to thank you on behalf of all of our callers and our listeners. So do you have a moment if you want to hear from one or two callers before we close well, out tonight? I, I want to thank you and for your prayers and, and all the people that pray for me. I, I believe in prayer has been scientifically proven that it works. And I will be praying for you as well. I feel better after doing this call. I'm glad I came mm. on. It brought back some memories for me, but my mother and, and the sacrifice she made for us, seven children she adopted. And whenever I speak, I, I think of her. She never met a stranger. And I, I just, I want to honor and respect the sacrifice she made. Because once you take on seven children, you don't have a life anymore. They become mm -hmm. your life. And that's why I was determined to buy her a home. I was determined. I said, this is the least I can do. When I turn 18, she will never pay another bill. When I turn 18, I will start working and doing everything I can. I worked for the Miami Sanitation Department. I was a garbage collector. I didn't care. People laughed at me. I cut grass. I would do whatever I could. I sold television sets door-to-door. -door. I worked at Sears as a sales clerk. I did whatever I could to take care of Mama. I wouldn't break the law. I wouldn't, I wouldn't steal or rob or do drugs because I promised her that she would never, ever be embarrassed for adopting me. I remember Mama said, if you ever go to jail, do not call me because I'm not coming. <laughs> and uh, I, a guy named Harry Jackson and I stole a bicycle and we got caught and a police officer named Jimmy Wilson caught us and put us in the cops in, in the police car and and so he said what's your name he said Harry Jackson what's your name my name is Leslie Brown Leslie Brown are you Mamie Brown's boy? I said, yes, sir. You one of the twins? I said, yes, sir. He said, your mother used to keep me when I was a kid. I'm taking you home. I said, no, sir. Can you take me to jail? Take, take me to prison, please, sir. Don't take me home. I said, I know you don't want to go home because Mamie's going to beat the hell out of you. <laughs> and so when the police cruiser pulled up, he called and said, Mamie, I got one of your boys out there. And she said, I know which one it is. Wesley was in the house. <laughs> so she came out there. She said, just a minute, Margaret, go get me a switch. <laughs> Mama beat me out there. 
in front of everybody. I was so embarrassed. Oh, my God, I was humiliated. Jimmy Wilson, he was a police officer for, for Miami Police Department. I tell you, man, I, I think about when I was a kid. I was such a problem kid. That's why one of the goals I have is I want to get strong enough to go to Chicago, work with young men there, to go to Atlanta and Detroit. I want God to give me enough strength to train other speakers and to go into prisons. I want to reduce the recidivism rate from donating all my products to the prisons that will receive them. But I feel that this is something I must do with the energy that I have. I'm older now, but I still got to fire. People who saw me speak this weekend, they were in a state of shock. They just said, he's, he's still got it. And I want not to leave here just helping those who have, have more. But he said, the least that you do unto these, my brethren, you do it also unto me. And so anybody that can email me, Les Brown 77, that can help me get access to some of these prisons that I can go in there. I think that's a calling on my life. They need to hear my voice. Many see themselves as criminals. I'm talking to a group of young men, and one guy said, oh, I did a dime. I said, dime? I knew what he meant. He did 10 years. So you're telling me your life is worth a penny a year? By the time I got through, he changed that conversation. He'll never say that again. So that's it. That's it. I'm through now. Thank you so much, Stacey. I appreciate you, and I love you. I love you more and appreciate you. You go rest that voice and continue to be amazing. Thank you for your example. Thank you for who you are. And we're going to give the callers instructions on how they can connect. And we look forward to having you on again next week. But you go on ahead and rest, and then I'm going to give everybody yes. the... Oh, before you open up, mm-hmm. before you open up, anybody would like to become a certified Les Brown speaker, trainer, a life coach, I want you to go to online to the Les Brown Institute and, and get the information there. But the other thing is, is that uh, I want people to give them an email address where they can email me and let me know any contacts that can help me get into these prisons and jails and juvenile detention centers. I, I, I'm being called to do this, to reduce this recidivism rate, because they, they're not trying to make these young people better. They're making them bitter. They're not trying to reform them. They make money off of being incarcerated. These prisons are privatized. They make money off it. It's a new form of slavery. And many of these young people don't know. And many of these cops, one of the worst things they do is they frame kids and put felonies on them, saying he was resisting arrest. And when you get a felony, you can't get a job. You can't get a job. You can't feed yourself or your family. And you're not going to stop that. So the system lock them out. So they go back to a life of crime. It's deliberate. It's deliberate. Yes, it is. And we've got to interrupt this. Stop madness. And I wait to do that. Okay. I think Absolutely. I'm through again. I'll yeah. stop three times. I'll, <laughs> I'll stop three times. I'm so, I'm so upset. Look at you. You fired up. So, When I saw this thing on 60 Minutes, I was so angry that people have to train people to replace their job in order for them to get their retirement, to get financial compensation. I mean, you know, I got six cents in my heart, but I feel I could, you know, I called my cardiologist, Dr. Capers. I said, would I be in danger in a fight? Because (laughs) I tell you, you know, I don't don't like it. Oh, man, I mean, I still got, I think I got a good right. I think I could, got a good right. I can knock somebody out. <laughs> I, 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 I don't, I'm about to call, I'm about to say something about somebody, but I ain't going to go up in there. I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to leave that alone. Leave that alone. <laughs> okay, all right. Yeah. 
Yeah, leave that alone. I was about to go there, but I ain't going to go there. Yeah, so stay that, leave that alone. Okay. Bye, baby. I love you. Let me hear the people say how they felt about the comments tonight. That will that gives me encouragement. I like to hear their thoughts on what I said tonight. Okay? Awesome. So I will do that while you rest up, and you'll be able to listen to them. Okay? All right. Love you. Bye-bye. Love you more. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I will open up the call so that you can leave your messages, your comments, your takeaways from Mr. Brown's message tonight. I just ask that we do it one at a time so that we can hear each and every one of you before we close out tonight's call. So stand by as I get ready to open up our call. All callers are unmuted. Now All callers are muted and may unmute themselves by pressing star six. Okay. Hi, Dr. Stacy. Hi, I hear two voices. I think I heard Karen and I heard Myron mm -hmm. and the third person. So we'll go in that it's order. Jen. Karen. Hi, thank you so much. Oh, Mr. Brown, that was just so powerful. Thank you so much, sir. Um, that resonated with me so much. Um, I always pray for him and everybody else continue to pray for him because we need him because he is definitely needed. And he can help these young people because they need help. They really do need help. Wow, thank you so much. You are very welcome, my love. And thank you for being here and always being a part of supporting the Motivational Monday Night Call. All right, Myron, you're next. Yeah, it's safe. Thank you. Hey, Lester, I, I thank God for, for you and I continue to pray for you. And um it kind of kicked up my emotions. I was always keep these these um, I call them my self instruction clip charts I look through every day. Um and I noticed that I had the one for colored for colored people only and my my, my baby, my mother was a baby back then and uh it just kicked up that more reason, more urgency to make my point, to stick that stake in the ground and let them know, you know, this is for real. I'm for real. So I uh, thank you for encouraging me tonight. Thank you, Stacey, for letting me share. Uh, so Hi, who's this? This is this is Holden Hassel out of uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. Awesome! Great to hear your voice. And what would you like to share? I, I would, I, you know, I got a lot to say. I mean, Les Brown is a voice that has motivated me and brought me back to life. You know, being at times whether you know you're you're very low and you're feeling down and out, he just gets you back up. And even when you're at your peaks, he just continues to allow you to get to new highs. And I, I met him one time out in Irvine, California, at a Get Motivated seminar, and, and I shook his hand, and he told me I had greatness within me, and I, I believed it every single day. Um, and I still believe it every single day. And, and I'm not where I want to be, but I'm getting there. I'm working on myself. And he's a huge mentor to me in my life and, and impacting me in so many different ways, allowing me to achieve the greatness that I have within me. Th thank you for this uh, phone call. I just saw it on Facebook and I joined a little late, but I, I, I love it. I'll be on here every Monday. Awesome. Well, welcome to the family and we're grateful to have you. Great. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. You're welcome. And let's see. Hey, Dr. Stacy. Yes. This is your girl Janice from Louisville KY. Hey, my Jen, it's great to hear your voice, beautiful. And what do you want to share with us tonight? Girl, it, I, I got so much, it will fill a room. But I'm going to give you the short version uh, just so other people have an opportunity to share. Uh, one, Mr. Brown, I have you lifted up in prayer. And me and God, we got a special connection. So you connected too. So... Walk in your wellness. That's all I'm going to say about that. Just walk in your wellness. Um, I listened to some of the a couple of the pieces that really stuck in my heart. When you stop fighting for what you want, what you don't want will take the job. I was like, oh no, wait a minute, I ain't giving up my job. <laughs> <laughs> the job I got, hey, I can't. I mean, it can't be beat with a stick. And I'm not going to take that in, in a, a, a rain on other people's parade. Everybody has a choice of what they choose to do and how they present themselves to the world. 
the way I get to present myself to the world is through my Uber experience. I have gotten to talk to so many young people, and as I talk to them, hey, what are you doing besides going to a job working for somebody else? And the responses that I'm getting now is, oh, well, I have my own business. I'm running a, a, a beauty salon. Wait, wait a minute. Are you a cosmetologist? No, I'm not a cosmetologist. I provide the, 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 the space for them to be able to do what they do. It doesn't matter how you do it. Just do something. And then he shared with me another business uh, a process that he has going on. And I'm hearing this over and over and over again. So when I listen to folks in my age range, 50 plus, that's all I'm saying, that the, this is the lost generation, that's a damn lie. Those kids are, they're focused. They just need more people like you, me, Les Brown, and other people like us to keep encouraging them to pursue their creativity and not to sit back and wait for the crumb off the table. Mm. Thank you, Janice from Louis K.Y. I appreciate that. And I know Mr. Brown is going to love listening to that. So thank you for your commitment and how you are using your platform, because that is a platform to be able to it share is. and inspire those lives. So thank you, Janice, for who you are and being a part of our community. Absolutely. How, thank you. You're hey, welcome. Dr. Stacey. Hey. This is Harold, Coach. Yeah, Coach V. Hey, Coach, how you doing? I am doing great, doing great. Um, so obviously you know who I am, and, and you know I love helping young men um, throughout my you know, from coaching football and the, and the other things that I do. Um, I want to thank uh, Mr. Brown uh, for the words that he's, he's brought into my life and inspired me to do um, similar to what he's doing, and I'm starting something called the uh, Be a Better Man and Raise a Better Man movement. Um, similar to what he's doing in, in the respects of going to jails and juvenile centers and things of that nature. I want to help young men and men in general just to be better fathers, husbands, men in all ways. And he's been a big inspiration in that fact. And uh, I heard him speak actually this weekend at that conference he did in Florida uh, with Grant Cardone. And I could tell you the impact that he had there was, uh, <clears throat> I'm trying to catch myself because it, it definitely impacted me quite a bit. And one thing I want to mention, I don't know how I can become part of you know part of you guys, the platinum speakers and such. I think we spoke about it a little bit. But when he said about the I'm that one, well, I'm one of those seven that he wants to train and want to figure out how to become the best speaker and presenter that I can be. Awesome, Coach Steve. Yeah, I'll make that announcement at the end of the call once again with the com. You can go there right now and see what is available for those who want to do just that. That's his mission right now and what the whole team is working on. So we look forward to encouraging your work. That's amazing. And the movement that you started is going to save and change so many lives. So just keep pushing and pressing and being the example because each of us are predestined to change the lives of those we are here to serve. We just have to get clear, focused, and stay committed. I appreciate that. Keep me in your prayers. And I also keep Mr. Brown in your, and you as well in the prayers. <laughs> I appreciate it. That's so needed. Thank you so much. All right. I heard one other person holding before we close out tonight's call. And once again, ladies and gentlemen, if you visit letterhouse.com, you can find out more information about the training and certification program. All righty, I think everyone has gotten Hello? through. Let's make some announcements. Oh, go right ahead. Oh, hi, hi, Dr. Stacy. This is Siraj from Los Angeles. Hi, Siraj. How are you, my friend? Good, good. I just want to make one quick point. Um, let's have to go to your book, the Action Action book. Yes. Um, okay, so when Les talks about no matter what you're going through, like, like when he talked about that he's not that today he was in bed, but yet he got up to, you know, to make the call and so forth. This goes right back to your wonderful book, Action, Action, Despite the Distraction. It's as simple as that. 
So I just need to uh, put that out there. I appreciate you, Gerard. Thank you so much. And that's what it is. Because so many things can come in our way, and without taking action, we'll get stuck. So thank you, Siraj. I appreciate you. I need to put you on my PR team for AfterActionBook.com. Yeah. Well, I'll be glad to do it because um, every time, man, don't, don't pick up the book. Get you up. So I appreciate you, Dr. Stacy. Thank you. Thank you so much. You were breaking up a little bit there, but we heard you at the end. And thank you so much. Okay. All callers are muted. So, Raj, I want to thank you. There was a little bit of background noise with everyone unmuting, but thank you so much, not only for your support of myself and ActionActionBook.com. I appreciate that. But, Siraj, being one of those who continue to come on the Les Brown Motivational Monday Night Call each and every week, all of you that are part of this family, because that's what we are, a family. We're cut from the same cloth. That's why you're attracted to the words that Mr. Brown shares. you watched him on YouTube. You've seen him live. You've had the opportunity to meet some of us that are on the leadership team as we travel with him all throughout the world. But the main thing that I want you to remember tonight is every word that Mr. Brown shared, everything that you've heard from one another is a reminder of what you already know, is that there is greatness inside of you. And it's up to you to take action on your goals and your dreams. So that's my prayer for you. I am grateful for your voices, for your participation, and thank you for sharing these words, which will be music to Mr. Brown's ears as he relaxes tonight and listen in on how his words have made an impact on your heart. So thank you. Have a blessed week. The start of spring, may you spring forth with new and amazing possibilities because all we serve is an example to show you that if it's possible for us, it's possible for you. And as Mr. Brown would say, it's not over until you win. This is Dr. Stacey N.C. Grant. I look forward to hearing your voices again next week. Remember to log on to lesbrowninstitute.com for more information on how you can join the team and be certified from the Les Brown Institute. And if you'd like to connect with me, you can do that on social media. All of my handles are on actionactionbook.com or Destiny Designers University at Dr. Stacey N.C. Grant. So look forward to hearing more testimonies of success as you go out there and change the world and provide hope in sometimes a very dark and troubled world. We will be the light. Bye-bye, everyone.